Hello, this is Ava from Soul GPS. Welcome to my channel. Today is part six of our series of how manipulative people, such as narcissists, sociopaths, and so on, people without conscience, use words in order to manipulate you. And before we get into it, I just want to say that um, I want to say thank you to this beautiful community that's that's been created around Soul GPS. Thank you for your comments, for your support, for your emails. And if you're new to here, make sure you subscribe to my channel so that you get all new videos, lots of new material about healing from abusive relationships and um, building the confidence and self-esteem, healing yourself so that you can get a, create a beautiful life for yourself and, uh, and get to, get to live the life on your terms and the way you'd like to. So, and also to build your immunity to other manipulators and narcissists who will most certainly uh, show up on your path. If you are uh, a, a good, a sensitive, open-minded, open-hearted person, then, you know, it, it, these people tend to show up. So, all right, let's talk about building associations and specifically it's about, um, using, punishment and reward in order to make you behave a certain way. So this is what narcissists will do is they will learn about you. They will know your hot buttons, your vulnerabilities, and contrary to, to what would happen in a healthy relationship when people support each other in an unhealthy, destructive, toxic relationship, there is this level of deep level of infidelity that happens. We're not even talking about cheating here. We're talking about trust and trusting the person with your personal information, which then they will take and use against you. They will, they will make fun of you. They will poke at you. They will bring uh, things that are very intimate and even secretive between the two of you in the most inappropriate situation um, to make you feel really bad about yourself. So that's the form of training we're talking about, right? If you've been um, in a relationship like that for a long time, this is deeply ingrained. And it has taught you that certain behaviors are acceptable and certain are not. And definitely there's this really destructive learning, which is that your needs or your wants don't matter. And that it's always about the other person because a relationship with narcissists is always a relationship of one. So, so they're going to build these associations between states, your moods, your emotions, and your actions. So they will reward you, make you feel good when you're doing good things, and they will punish you, make you feel bad, abandon you, give you silent treatment when you're not doing the things that, the way that they want you to. So for example, this is the way financial abuse, sexual abuse takes place, right? So one of, one of the things that they will be doing to you is, for instance, they will be really happy and overjoyed and, you know, giving you all the attention and approval when you're spending money towards something that they too want. And recently that was an example with one of my clients when her partner was just pouting and just throwing tantrums like a kid. We're talking about a you know, person well, well past his middle age, uh, pouting and shouting and, and, you know, using all of these, what I call them the sandbox tactics of a child. To, because she didn't want to buy a rug or didn't want to move to another house, right? And so she's like sitting there and everything inside her is screaming, no, this is not right. I can't afford it. This is not the right time. She's not contributing. It's me doing everything. And, uh, right. And so, so her inner compass is, is, is telling her, no, don't do it. But inside she's been manipulated for so many years with guilt and, you know, feeling bad about it. And he's giving her, you know, all these horrible treatment that she's wondering, you know, what should I do? Because she wants to feel good again. So that's the trap we always fall into. Remember, you want to feel good again. So I'm going to tell you what the solutions to that are in a minute. But, uh, but it's about action. Remember, um, uh, the association training, uh, uh, reward and punishment is all about want them wanting you to take a certain action and then rewarding you or punishing you depending on whether they like it or not. And uh, one of the most damaging examples, I would say, of reward practice is um, makeup sex after a really, really bad fight with your partner. So say you're fighting, things are going, getting really bad, they're escalating, it's getting worse and worse. You know, you know, you, you maybe not as far as that you are right, because, you know, oftentimes 
arguments are complicated and, and what they do is, well, what narcissists tend to do, manipulators tend to do is they will bring up all sorts of artillery from the past, from, you know, from things you've told them and this, and it just gets into this big ball of wax and it's, you know, and the simple thing suddenly becomes this catastrophic hurricane that gets whipped up. Well, they do that on purpose because they want you to give up. They want to exhaust you. And then once you give up, they will come back around and they're going to be really nice, you know, and they're going to bond with you again, whether it's, you know, through sex or some other form of um, affection or bonding so that you are learning in this process that it's not worth it for you to uh, fight your position and you're much better off giving up so that then you get your reward, which is bonding. It happens a lot in a lot of relationships. So when, if this happens to you, say you're in a new relationship and you're, you're starting to notice the pattern, that's a huge, huge red flag. And the other one would be, uh, for, for, for instance, for punishment example is kind of the example I mentioned earlier, like for financial abuse, right? Like I want you to buy this. I want you to move with, move in with me or have me move in with you. Oftentimes the, the scenario where the narcissist is going to, you know, sort of push their life, bulldoze their themselves inside of your life and, and just kind of like, you know, just, just. Um, start planting roots and, and suddenly it's like, you know, you're in, caught in this spider web and you can't get out of it. So, um, you know, something to definitely be mindful of here is, uh, you know, they're going to be using all of these tactics again in a healthy relationship. And I want to start talking a little bit more about, you know, the differences in my videos between unhealthy and healthy, but in a healthy relationship, this merits a discussion. Are we going to move? Are we going to buy, you know, a, a new car or this and that? This merits a discussion. This mer merits an evaluation. This merits some time thinking about it. This merits a conversation about the future. What are we doing? Clarity too. Very important in relationships. Um, what are we doing together? What is the level of commitment? You know, there are of course stages of, of uh, creating bonding with a person. And, um, but you know, once we're talking about m moving in or buying a house or buying a car or buying a vacation or doing any form of big financial investment, there has to be a deep emotional investment there first before that happens. So just keep, keep that in mind because what narcissists do is they do the reverse. It's almost like they're dangling this carrot on the stick that, oh, I'm going to love you. I'm going to give what you want, which is that emotional fulfillment. Um, once you give me this. Right, so they always flip things on their head. Um, it shouldn't happen this way. So anyway, so so once they get what they want, and then they turn sweet, and then it's nice, and then it's the makeup sex, and then it's the you know the smiles and the affections, and the okay, let's do this, let's do this together. If if you've been through this, or if you are going through this right now, what I'd encourage you to do is to just notice how long that cycle of sweetness actually lasts. And I guarantee you, it will not. It's not going to last long. Week tops. Week is a lot. It's usually just a couple of days, maybe even a few hours, and then they start to go back into their own pattern of not wanting this or wanting that or being off on their own tangent or of their own path, you know, doing their thing, you know, garnering other forms of supply that they need in order to feel good about themselves again. So, so just to just notice, try to, try to observe that and, and just notice what they're doing. So, um, so yeah, so if you've experienced a lot of this form of, uh, training, the, the, the reward and punishment associate training, again, it associates your action with a state, with a feeling then you have two things you need to work on. Number one thing is to learn to say no, especially to the punishment side of things when they're like, I, I need this, I want this, blah, blah, blah. if you don't give this to me, I'm gonna treat you like shit. So if you get a lot of that, learn to say no and be uncomfortable. And you, I mean, you are going to be uncomfortable in this, in this moment, but learn to accept this discomfort. The way I look at it is, um, when I was learning to do this is it's about expanding my container, my emotional container. Um, of course it would be awesome if we only felt great. Uh, unfortunately in life, things operate in waves. So we're going to have ups and downs and ups, not like with narcissists, it goes jagged like this. We're talking, you know, it's just, it's normal. Like we need to, we need the contrast in order to be able to gauge where we are and to appreciate, um, a vast gamut of emotions. But, um, so, so if you are dealing with this form of boundary setting, cause that's what the saying no is, is a form of boundary setting. If you're dealing with that and it's making you feel uncomfortable and you're just learning, breathe into the discomfort and learn to sit with it and just kind of imagine 
it's like your body is a container, right? And, uh, and, and and sometimes our emotional container is smaller than our body. It's kind of like this small little area, depending on where you experience things most. For me, it's mostly in the in my solar plexus. That's where mo- most of my emotions are um, stored. So, you know, it's kind of there. And, and it's almost like a size of a little glass, right? And, and I'm holding it and I'm feeling uncomfortable as I breathe. I let it expand. And so it dilutes, as the container expands, it dilutes the negativity, the tension. And then as my container gets bigger, it doesn't feel as uncomfortable to be with those emotions. And I almost look forward to it. It's a, it's, that's a form of kind of self-empowerment training where you're like, oh, okay, well, I'm not feeling good right now. I just said this. And it's like, it's making me uncomfortable because I'm used to saying yes to everybody because I want them to feel good about themselves. And da, 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 you know, the whole people pleasing thing. And then I feel like, oh, so then I'm like, oh, I'm starting to feel, it's like a new form of association. I'm starting to feel uncomfortable. So then I'm like, wow, there's an opportunity for expansion. Now is an opportunity for growth. I can breathe into that and I can learn to hold this emotion. And eventually a day will come, a time will come when I will be able to use it to my advantage. But before, it's kind of like using like martial arts training or weapons training, let's say, you know, it's like learning to use a sword. First, you need to be able to hold that sword in your hand and it's heavy. You know, it's not easy. Like imagine like, I, I, I don't know if you've ever tried that, you know, picked up one of those tools uh, fighting tools from the from the Middle Ages. It's heavy stuff. It's all made out of steel or iron. It's a similar thing. If we're running away from our emotions, when they come, they seem extremely heavy and difficult and almost intimidating. So learn to hold it first, and eventually you will learn to use them to your advantage. For instance, if you have a big project and you know there'll be all this fear and and um, hesitation and self doubt, and then you'll be they'll be coming and you'll be like, well, actually. These, these are these are the tools I can use in order to inspire people by t- telling them my story and allowing them to relate to me, right, through my fear, through my self-doubt, and this way I can form genuine connection in life. So these are kind of like the later stages of uh, emotional literacy and building yourself up, and this, this video could go forever on this topic, but I just want to kind of, you know, give you a little taste of that and where that can go. But for now, just to tell you that feeling uncomfortable when you're starting to set boundaries and say no is normal. Learn to do it and take advantage of the um, of the uh, take advantage of the moment and use it as an opportunity to expand. And you can do that literally through breathing and just being in a moment. So and accepting the emotion because sometimes it's like by pushing it away is when it gets when it persists because it wants to be acknowledged. When you acknowledge and you're like, oh, this is what I'm feeling. And it's like, oh, okay. All right, I'm feeling that. And then eventually your mind is going to go somewhere else because the emotion's been acknowledged and it's okay now. So try that. And uh, if you've been, if, if you've been um, receiving a lot of the other side of the rewards and punishment um, equation, which is um, the reward, right? And, and that is, for instance, like with the, with the example of makeup sex we're talking about, or, you know, giving into something or giving something up so that you can feel better <clears throat> as a result, because you're going to get that attention, that affection again, then you need to learn to practice self-care and take control of your emotions. And, and the practice I gave you a minute ago about expanding your container is one of those practices, especially if things are really dark and heavy. That's one of the best things you can do is just acknowledge what you're feeling and expand your capacity of holding it. But then there are other things, you know, just, just, just learning to address your needs. And this is a great opportunity to learn about, okay, this is me. I am different. There's only one me in the universe like this. And I have my needs. This is my set of needs. And we all have similar needs. It's usually, you know, love, care, connection, warmth, shelter, um, uh, financial stability, you know, things like that, positive emotions. But we, for, for each of us, it's going to have a little bit of a different set of priorities. So, so learn to, you know, ask yourself that question, you know, what that is. I was, I was talking to a friend yesterday about, you know, she's, she's one of those givers, you know, she just gives and gives and gives, helps grow other companies, but she herself is always kind of at the end of the list. And I'm like, you know, imagine if you took the few minutes of your day that you're giving to other people, to all these projects and given to, to yourself, how much you could grow. So that's, 
that's what self-care practice is about. It's not easy. It's not about just, you know, laying in a bath and enjoying the bubbles, although you can do that too, and that's part of it. But it's also taking the time to turn off your phones, to turn off your computer, to disconnect, sit down with a journal and just write down, what are my needs? Write down, why am I here? What, what does my ideal life look like? And, and create almost like a mission statement in your mind so that when different choices uh, come in your life when you need to discern, do I want to go left or right? You can ask yourself, does this help? Which, which path helps more with my mission, with my vision, with what I want? So you need to spend some time with yourself learning about what that is. And also sometimes, you know, the way we learn what we want is by knowing what we don't want. So that's another way. So, so, so uh, practice self-care. Before I wrap up, I want to just say that notice how much leverage and power you have here when it comes to this building associations um, part when they're trying to, again, we're looking at emotional manipulation. They're trying to make you dependent on what they do. You're state dependent. So notice that there's a way to take all that power back and learn to learn to modulate yourself on your state on your own. I mean, that's, that's high level living. You know, we're talking about most people who live the lukewarm existence, as I call it, the in-between, you know, things are not too bad, things are not too good. They don't, pay, they don't really look at that. But when you're in the crisis, you're almost forced to set on a path that's going to be extremely empowering. So use this to your advantage. Um, you know, don't let yourself settle back down in this state of kind of being half asleep and just going through the motions. Use this to your advantage. It's going to make such a big difference because just a one degree shift from where you used to be is going to over time end up putting you somewhere else. And if you, if you have your eyes on the target, or at least you know what you want to feel, um, you know, feel good, not feel this heaviness, then you already kind of have a sense of direction. So that's why I, I, I titled my channel Soul GPS, because it's about pl connecting with your soul and letting your soul and your deepest needs and desires and your intuition direct your destiny. This way you can live an authentic life. So, so learn to create your state, learn to take, take control of your emotions and not be dependent on them so much. And here's the best part is that this is going to prepare you for a great relationship because, you know, there's so many people who write to me about loneliness. I want to talk about this more, way more. Um, and you know, they, they, they leave a destructive relationship and then they feel alone. But the thing is, is that the healing process between the bad relation and the good relationship is a rich ground for getting in touch with yourself, building a great relationship with yourself so that you can have a healthy and beautiful relationship in the future. And let me tell you, if you want to attract a quality person, which I believe you do, that quality person is also going to have to have strong boundaries and strong self-care practice. So by learning to do that now for yourself, you're preparing yourself to have a really nice um, alignment with your future partner. Because I bet that the person that you'll be, you will be attracted to is going to have to be strong, have their life together and so on. And that's what you're learning to do for yourself right now. Because from what I have seen, and I've been exposed through my travels over the last year to so many interesting dynamics and couples and uh you know I, I've, I've gotten to meet some really beautiful people too and i've gotten to form new connections and i tell you this is that high caliber people seek high caliber people and this is your opportunity to become that too and i'm not talking about you know having to um you know reach some immense levels of success it's all really simple is being exclusive about the things you let into your life protecting your sanctuary, your inner temple, being selective about that. That's where the boundary practice comes in and being, and having your state, your happiness, your joy, independent of other people so that you can be a fountain of joy wherever you go. So I hope that this helped you, um, this video. Um, I really enjoyed talking to you today and, and I hope I was able to con convey my emotions and my feelings and my really positive state your way. That was my intention. And, uh, and I hope that um, it, it has allowed you to yet put even more clarity as you're looking back at your relationship or looking in at the current relationship to see the unhealthy behaviors and, and, and be able to say no to that and, and take care of yourself without waiting for somebody else to do that for you.
that's great practice of, of independence and, um, and self-care. So I wish you all the best and I'm inviting you to um, check out which video we're going to do now. I believe it's going to be video number seven. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye.